Okay, so we have different normal forms. Actually, in each normal form will be a will be a trade-off between the redundancy reduction versus the quality, quality and efficiency. Because to ensure we have certain normal forms, we may have to divide some relations into smaller ones. And the division of the relation may also create lots of time cost if we plan to do a quarry among these relations, right? If we divide a relation into two and we further do the quarry later, then we may have to do the join among them. It creates lots of time cost. Therefore, normally for normal forms, we have a trade off. We want, to, we want to reduce some redundancy. However, we also need to ensure we will not uh, divide these uh, relations into very small relations. And in other words, we have a trade off among the normal forms. What we need to do next is to learn the normal forms. We need to understand what are the normal forms, what are the properties we can get for each normal form. And we also learn how to transform a relation into R star in for each for each of the normal forms. And we also care we also carefully evaluate the trade-offs. Trade-off I mean the redundancy reduction versus the quarries to be done later. And many of these normal forms are defined based on various constraints, like the function dependency and the keys. Therefore, before we talk about the normal forms, we have to talk about the function dependency and the keys first. These are two important concepts to be covered in this section. Okay, so you will see the organization of this section, right? We first talk about these two concepts, functional dependency and the keys. Then we talk about many different normal forms. In each one, we need to learn the forms first and also learn the transformation algorithm and further to the evaluation of the trade-offs. And all these normal forms are done by some experts in database systems. From this court in 1970, he designed the first normal form in his paper. And since then, he will develop this uh, second normal form, the third normal form, as well as BC normal form. After this BC normal form, we also have the fourth normal form, the fifth normal form, DK normal form, and the sixth normal form as well. And for some of the normal form can be very complicated, and we will not cover them in this lecture. And we will mainly focus on the third normal form, BC normal form, and the fourth normal form. For the remaining one, you can also check them online by yourself if you are interested in them. And some of these experts also achieve the Turing Award because of their contributions to these normal forms. Okay, then will be the, our attack plan for this section. We we'll provide the motivations in the very beginning why we have to learn the normal forms for the relational design. We will talk about the function dependency and keys first. These are two very important concepts and tools to help us to study the normal forms. And we also introduce how to do reasoning with this uh, function dependency. This FD denotes a function dependency for short here, as well as keys. And then we first talk about the desired properties of the schema or the relation refinement and the polish. Based on this knowledge, we will talk about several normal forms and trade-offs. We focus, on, we focus on the BC normal form, third normal form, fourth normal form, and central. And we can put them all together on how to design some good database schemas and relations by based on the knowledge we have now already. So for the example we showed before, right? We have an example for the table of a person. Maybe a better design actually exists. We can divide the relation we showed before, right? If you still remember, we have a relation. If you still remember, we have a relation as shown in this page for a person, right? For a person with SSN address and a phone number. This is a relation we can get via the translation from the YAD diagram. We find some problems with this relation, right? In the real world usage. And a better relation we can design actually is to divide the previous relation into two instead. We can use the SSN with address and one relation or one table. And we, can, and we can use SSM with phone number as another relation in state. So in this table, the first table, SSM will be the key, right, for the table. And to the second one, we can use both SSM with phone number 
as another key for this table instead, right? So this will be a better relation we can design. Then the question will be how to decide and why we should divide the relation into these two. We will introduce this by starting the function dependency and keys first. So first of all, what is a function dependency? Function dependency denote a form of constraint on the relation. And finding this constraint is also one part of our database design, actually. And we will use this function dependency to help us for the polish and refinement of the relations and schemas in this section. Therefore, you need to know the function dependency, this concept. What does this mean? Formally, the function dependency denotes on a certain relation. If two tuples, tuple I mean the data records, agree on some attributes, like a1 to an. Agree means they have the same attributes on a1 to an. Then, these data tuples must also agree on the other attributes b1 to bm. Is a1 to an, b1 to bm, they are from the same relation? If so, then we can say a1 to an implies b1 to bm. Or we can say b1 to bm functionally dependent on a1 to an. So let's describe a functional dependency of the A1 to An to B1 to Bn. So they are on the same they are within the same relation here. This is the definition. And we need to find such functional dependency when we are doing the polishing of the relations. And we also wonder how can we find them? Normally they, are, they can be found based on the physical meanings. In this page, we show you an example. Right? We want to show a relation about employees in a company. And the relation for the employee covers the employee ID, the name, phone number, and the position. Based on the physical meaning, we know the employee ID will be the key, right? If two tuples, they agree on the employee ID, they should also agree with the name, the phone number, and the position. So based on the physical meanings, we can derive a function dependency Employee ID implies name, phone number, and position. And furthermore, from the table, we can also find another function dependency. Give a position of a person of an employee. We will. So for each position of an employee in the company, they will have a phone number, right? We can also derive another function dependency, which is position implies phone number. Right. However, based on the table, we cannot say the phone number implies position because we can find a count example 1, 2, 3, 4 here and 1, 2, 3, 4 here. Given two tuples, the first one and the last one, they agree on the phone number. However, they don't agree with the positions, right? In other words, this phone number implies the position it doesn't hold based on this relation. So this is some examples of the function dependency we can derive based on the employee this relation. So generally, a function dependency is a statement about all the allowable relations. They must be identified based on semantics of the application. According to your application, you should be able to find some of this function function dependency by yourself, right? Now, if you are working on some application for like, for the employees or for students. You should, you should have some keys for the students who can know the SSN that implies many other attributes, for example, right? So they should be identified based on semantics of the relation. Generally, you cannot derive this fun function dependency based on the data or gates. Because if we want to prove the functional dependency holds for your relation, then we, may must, then we must to decide for all the tuples they will hold, right? It is very hard. Normally, given some instances like R1 of a relation, we can check if this R1 violates some function dependency. On the other hand, if we want to prove this function dependency doesn't hold for our relations, it should be very easy. We just need to provide some counterexamples, just like the previous one, right? 
We cannot say the phone number implies position. We can find one counter example. One, two, three, four, the phone number implies two different positions, right? So therefore, given an instance, we can check if this instance violates some functional dependency or not on the relation. But we cannot decide if this functional dependency holds of the relation or not. And this functional dependency should be designed based on semantics instead. And you might wonder what's the relation between functional dependency versus the keys. We have been talking about the kit for a long time. And before we say that the keys are some attributes can uniquely identify some tuples. However, we never provide the formal definition of keys. Before, we cannot do this because the keys can be defined based on functional dependency. So let's assume we have a functional dependency and given some attributes, uh, k, k is a bunch of attributes on a relation. If from this k is attributes, we can imply all the attributes in the relation. Then we can say this k, this attribute, is a super key of the relation. So this is the definition of keys or super keys by so far. We have introduced, we can introduce by, by this conduct so far. So this k can be any size. If this k can implies all the attributes, then the k is a super key. We don't require k to be the minimum. k can be any size. And the largest super key we can identify for a relation will be all the attributes of R can imply all the attributes of R, right? In other words, the largest k we can get is all the attributes of R itself. Of course, normally we want to find a smaller key or smaller super key in state. Therefore, you can see, uh, based on the function dependency, we can provide the definition of keys, right? If this k, if some attributes can imply all the attributes, there will be a super key for the relation. And this function dependency provides a generalization of keys we used before, right? And we can first talk about this example we have provided. In the example, we divide the person the relation into two parts. The second table we can derive is shown here, right? We have SSN with a phone number. According to this table, it seems given a phone number, we can imply the SSN. Is it true or not? Can we say the phone number implies SSN based on data we show here in this relation? Probably we cannot say this, right? Because remember, if we want to check if a function dependency is true or holds over the relation, we may have to prove for all the cases they will hold. Only based on this, uh, some examples we show here, it's not enough to say the phone number implies SSN. We cannot say so, right? Because in the real world, we allow the phone number to be reused. Now, if I register a phone number and later on I close my account, and my phone number will be used by someone else, right? And we can have the different person may have the same phone number in our table, even though we didn't show them here. So therefore, for this case, only based on this true, only based on this data tuples we show here, we cannot conclude phone number implies SSN. It's an invalid uh, function dependency. We use this example to show that if we want to derive some function dependency, we need to follow the semantics of, of the application instead. We cannot just derive some function dependency based on data tuples we can get, because the data tuple we can get is incomplete. They are not enough to derive the function dependency. We have to follow the semantics. Okay, this is the FD, and next we will talk about the keys instead.